Hey, everybody, this is CJ Meenan from Street Startups. I'm here, as always, with my partner, Tracy Syfax. How are you, Tracy? Oh, we're doing great, CJ. Once again, always glad to be back here. And once again, like I always say, we might be locked in, but we are not locked out of opportunities <laughs> and not locked out of doing business. So I That's am not to be here today, of course, because my man is on the stage. Oh, boy, we have an exciting day, right? A great, great friend of Street Startups. Our first guest ever on the podcast is yeah. back. <laughs> Tracy, why don't you introduce our audience? Oh, to- man, introduce them like... No, no one, no one can. Someone that I've known for my 25 years that I've been in business, so it gives me great honor and great pleasure um, to bring someone I call a friend and a mentor onto um, Street Startup this morning. My dear friend John Harmon. Um, John is the president of the African American Chamber of Commerce of, of the state of New Jersey, representing some 80,000 black, over 80,000 black-owned businesses here in the state of New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's, it's just an honor to have him on because he has the pulse on the economics of this state and, and where we are as a community and where we are, especially in this climate. So mm-hmm. it's a great honor to bring someone who can speak specifically to where we are and where we are economically and where we need to go and the great opportunity that we have lying in ahead of us. So John, it's an honor to bring you on this morning, my good friend, and, and mm-hmm. welcome to Street Startups and glad to have you back. Awesome. Well, Tracy, CJ, I tell you, um, I mean this wholeheartedly, man. It's a special bond that we have between us. We're committed to helping those who desire to be helped. Um, this is yep. what this is all about. I mean, you guys would do an amazing job in, in trying to um, really leverage talent that many people don't know exists. And the secret sauce that you guys provide in your, in your programming is transformational. We're just excited to be uh, a part of that. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you, John. You know, Tracy, this is you and I. When when all the the pandemic and and uh, the the um, uh, situation started coming up in different cities across this uh, country, especially after the George Floyd situation, you know, you and I sat down and we said we need to do something. We need to do what we do well. Uh, which is help people with economic empowerment. Mm-hmm. And we said, okay, who are we going to call? And we both <laughs> said, we're going to call John. And we called John and said, John, what can we do? We need to get into yeah. different cities where we're needed, where economic empowerment's needed, where entrepreneurship's needed. That was what, two months ago? Yeah. And guess what? We talked to John, said we want to get some programs started. John said, hey, I have some things in the works. We can get you guys in there, get you connected. And guess what? We're going to launch in September. We're going to launch two new programs to help folks start businesses in cities in New Jersey where they're needed. So my message right off the bat is if you don't have a friend like John Harmon in your network who can get things done, go find one today. Right. That's it. So thank you, John. But, John, you know, we've talked a lot about this issue of economic empowerment and what entrepreneurs need to do with communities today. You're out there seeing what mm-hmm. needs to be done at all the levels. Give us your insights on what entrepreneurs can be doing now. Well, um, CJ and Tracy, um, the COVID-19 situation and then the um, unrest as it relates to the, mur- the murder, the brutal murder of George Floyd and others um, ironically, has set the stage for some real opportunities. Uh, the engagement of government, the engagement of corporations, the engagement of financial institutions across America, there's a real um, different feel in society. And so I interact with these, these leaders all the time. But the conversation is different, it's more substantive, it's more focused. And so there's real opportunities that are taking place in the marketplace today. Uh, I would say at an unprecedented level, but again, we need men and women who are serious about um, engagement, serious about um, standing up their enterprises to raise their hand, to get connected to the resources, opportunities, and information will help them realize their dreams. So that's what's taking place today in society. I just saw one of my colleagues 
Rising Tide Capital in Jersey City got a $5 million grant yeah. from PayPal. That's a big number. And uh, Jillian, I know, um, is going to leverage those resources by way of grants to help many businesses, some of which folks that you have provided mentorship, technical service, and educational uh, models to. So right now, if you are really, uh, you have an existing business, you have a desire to start, to start a business, this is the opportunity to really, really connect with uh, the two of you, connect with the African American Chamber and others to move your vision to a reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and I think too, John, just to add to that, you know, we talk about some of these startups and helping folks get off the ground. But you know, at Street Startups, we like to say this is where the underground economy meets mainstream economy. You know, we have a lot of folks that are actually quasi in business now. Uh, that need to begin to step up and take their business to a next level. And as the young folks say, start having receipts. <laughs> I mean, the fact that in order for you to grow your business, in order for you to scale your business, you have to begin to um, put those receipts in order and have those things available. So looking at the, the, the state of the economy now, and, and we, we're into this mode of buy black and support black businesses and support the uh, black community. What do you say to those folks who have been on the fence of doing business the right way and been on the fence of really taking that business to a next level? How can we make sure we encourage those folks to get involved? Tracy, it's an excellent question. I want to go back and then I want to get right into the heart of your question, but just think, um, most businesses, particularly businesses in urban communities, your retail, your barbershops, your hair salons, the retail stores, many of them have been closed as long as 90 days. Ooh. All right? 90 days, and, and I would say before they were closed, they were doing okay, but they still were not getting their equitable share of business. That's right. Yeah. That's a fact, right? So there are some stats to say that they only had, those that were in business might have had only 27 days of resources for operating capital to sustain them. So if they've been out of business 90 days, 60, 60 days, they were totally out of money, out of inventory, totally broke. And so that, that, that is one major issue. And then two, this underground economy, people are doing business, without receipts, off the books. You know, it might feel good to have a lot of cash in your pocket, but when you have major incentive programs, mm. the PPP, the, uh, uh, the idle loan, I mean, you have trillions of dollars on the street, uh, they can't partake because they cannot connect with the mainstream. Mm. So the term resources, opportunities, information, all those things contribute to your success. That's assuming that you've met the right protocols, right? You, you have a QuickBook system where you're managing your, your resources. You have a banking account. You have an accountant. You have an attorney. You can pr produce um, profit and loss statements, income statements. Mm -hmm. um, if you can produce that type of information, you're, you're in the mainstream economy. If you if you cannot answer yes to that, you're still operating underground. And the costs and the consequences of doing business that way will, will marginalize you every time. And so we cannot continue to make excuses for people who are still operating in the 50s and we're there in 2020. And, and I speak to the black community in particular because, you know, there's still a lot of, well, there's too much emotion in the business conversation. Mm. Mm. There's business and then there's emotion. There's, there's very little room for emotion when you talk to business. Emotion may get you in the room. <coughs> it's going to take a value proposition to sustain engagement. Mm -hmm. And so many of these businesses, this is the time to get it right. The federal government has just extended the PPP program to August 8th. 
See, you know, as a former banker, I've been, you know, doing this a long time. When I say to you, this money is like money you can just grab off the shelf. It is that simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the basic questions is the name of your business, how long you've been in business, your tax ID number, what is your bank routing number, what is your bank account number, how much income you made last year, gross, what is your gross expenses. All you need is two numbers and then your third number. That's the application. Now, if you have your ducks in a row, it may take you 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. If you don't have it, it may take you an hour. But once you put sin, um, right now, two days a week, you got money to go right into your account. No closing. So during the busy time, it took maybe a month or two. But I'm hearing people getting loans, getting this money the same day, for 48 hours. So if you have two employees immediately on the idle loan, that's two grand. And then based on your information, they automatically qualify you for a loan. Then they come back and say, hey, by the way, you qualify for, let's say, $10,000 or $50,000. And then you, you answer a few more questions. That's it. You don't have to show up at a closing. Yeah. No, it's that, it's that simple. And, and, and now, on, on, on top of that, they tell people, we may forgive that loan. <laughs> so now, Tim Leonard came out and said, listen. We know we lent you some money. We know we want monthly payments, right. and such, but now we're thinking about just forgiving the whole loan. So, I mean, you can't get no easy. To be told, Tracy, I'll, I'll bet you uh, a state dinner that when, if, if Joe Biden becomes president, there's a high probability it'll all be forgiven. Mm. There's a high probability it's going to all be, be forgiven. And the, the grant portion was already forgiven, uh -huh. this current administration. So we, we have until August 8th, a whole month now, to, to draw down $130 billion is what they have on the table right now. Mm. African American Chamber of Commerce can assist you with your application. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Free. Mm -hmm. Free. We're, not gonna come, we're not going to come to your house and go in your drawers and get your papers. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> waiting for it, brother. Is, it, is this really real? Is real that? <laughs> I, I yield back. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, yeah. That's great. So, That's great. So, folks, you heard it. The, the chamber's not going to come to your house and fill the paperwork out for you, but they are there to help you. And yes. that's an important, important resource in our communities. Tracy, give us our final, our final thoughts. Well, final thoughts is, um, once again, we, you know, we talk about this and say this all the time, CJ. Um, business, um, the Business Club is one of the most inclusive clubs in the country. And um, we have an opportunity to participate on a small level. We have an opportunity to participate on a larger level. And I think the way, the times that we're living in right now is there's no uncertainty. Your job is not guaranteed to be there mm -hmm. ever. And we have to start looking at taking our talents and be creative on how we bring in additional income, not only to ourselves, but to our family. And we have a great opportunity to do this. I like to talk, I talked last week. You know, if you can't name five positive things that you've gotten out of 115 days of isolation, lack of time was not your problem. So having a plan on how we move forward and how we look at business as a community, as a whole, I think is at our feet right now. And all the, all the atmosphere and the climate has put us right where we need to be in a crisis and making sure that we need to have businesses and, and economic opportunities in our community. Mm -hmm. So I think we're not in a better place, John. We're in a bad place, but I think we're in a good place. And I one, agree. Yeah, I, I just want to thank you, John, for coming on board and, and dropping those nuggets on us. And remember, folks out there, the man said free. They can help you access over $100 billion in loans 
and PPP money, and they're willing to do it for free, but he's not going to come to your house and get your receipts out the drawer. Help him help you. So that's, that's my final that's my final thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks. So thank you so much, as always, for listening. I want to thank our guest, uh, the founder and CEO of the African American Chamber of Commerce here in New Jersey, and a friend to street startups, Mr. John Harmon. John, thank you, as always. Tracy, thank you for being here. And folks, we will see you next time on Street Startups. Peace. Yeah.